Okay, here we go. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to determine the equation from a table of values. This should be a nice review lesson. We've done this many times so far this year, so learning it again. All right, so what do we need to find the equation? Unless, of course, it's a special case. Those are our two weirdos, right? Horizontal and vertical lines. But most of our lines, we just need to find the slope and the y-intercept, m and b. All right, so let's start by finding our slope from a table of values. So remember, slope is rise and run or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, or we can define it as change in y and change in x. All of those different formulas mean the same thing. So we use delta, the Greek letter, to represent change in our math and science classes. So let's figure out what are we changing by here each time. All right, so the x's, well, we are going up by two each time, up by two, up by two. So our change in x is two. And what about our y? We are going down by six, down by six each time. So this definitely tells me it's linear because everything's changing at a constant rate, so we're good. Um, all right, so to write our slope, we're gonna go what's negative six, change in y, divided by two, the change in x, and we can reduce that to negative three. So we got our slope now. So let's write that up here in our little collection of data. Now, we need to figure out what b is. Now, let's talk about this one's so easy to find b that we don't need to do anything special because b, again, is the coordinates of our y-intercept. It's the y-coordinate of that. So how do we find that? Remember, let me just label this here, our y-intercept. Remember, that occurs when the x-coordinate is 0, the y-coordinate is b. So we can just go backwards in our table, can't we? 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, maintain the pattern to 0. So there's the x-coordinate of 0. Let's go backwards here. If we're reversing this, instead of subtracting 6, we're going to be adding 6. Negative 8 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 plus 6 is 22. So that would be the coordinate, right? So we have b. There we go. So that one was pretty easy. We can write our equation now, remember, in y equals mx plus b form. We just need to replace the m with negative 3 and the b with 22. And there's our equation. Done. All right, so we've done those plenty this year. Let's move on to one. We've also done it, but I want to say, what if it's not so easy to find this coordinate just by going backwards in our table? So let's check that out next. All right, so we got another table of values. M equals, I don't know yet. B equals, I don't know yet. Those are the two pieces of information we need to find, slope and y-intercept. So let's start by finding our slope. Slope can be defined as change in x over change in y. All right, so look at here, at this one here. Okay, so our change in y is this side. What is x changing by on this side? Now, these ones are a little messier, these numbers. So I'm gonna do is go, what's 250? Subtract 130 and we get 120. So from here to here, we went up by 120. And if we wanna find the change from here to here, from 250 to 490, I'm just gonna go, what's 490? Subtract 250, which gives me 240. So to find the change, there we go, oops. To find the change, we just need to take any value and subtract the previous value, finding the change, the difference, right? Let's look on the Y side, let's do the same thing. What's 1,000 minus 976? is uh, sorry is 24 so we went up by 24 here and how about what's 1048 minus 1000 that means we went up by 48 now it might not appear that we have a linear equation here because we're kind of jumping around our numbers they're not going in order on our x side right our independent variables the x's seem to be jumping around a bit but if we find our slope let's look at two different ways of calculating our slope here right i could do the change in y is 24 here divided by the change in x 120 or I could do 48 divided by 240 there we go and we can reduce the first one both of these fractions are divisible by 24 both of the the numbers the 24 and the 120 I mean are divisible by 24 so this gives us one fifth and if you divide 48 by 48 over here and 240 by 48 you will also get one fifth so it turns out we do have a linear relationship. Our slope is the same no matter what, no matter what set of points we use. All right, so we got our slope. Now we need to find B. Now counting backwards, I don't really want to count backwards all the way. And again, what if I'm minus 120, I'm at 10. It gets a little difficult to count backwards to zero. So instead, let's use something we've already done a ton of. What is that? Remember, we start by subbing in our slope into y equals mx plus b. So y equals 1 5th x plus b. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute in a point. 
sub in, and let's choose the point for x and y from our table. So you get to choose any point. So pick the easiest one. You know what? I'm going to pick 250, 1000. If you want to use a different one, go for it. We should get the same answer. So let's try subbing in 250 for x and 1000 for y. All right, so 1000 equals 1 over 5 times 250 plus b. So we're just going to go, what's 250 divided by 5, which is 50. Oops, there we go. And I'm going to subtract 50 from both sides. And there we go. We're going to get 950 for B. Let me just flip it around. 950, there's B. So you want to use that same old skill I taught you a week ago. And we've used this even before March break, going back a long time. We've been using this skill, but we reviewed it again last week. It's the same thing. So this should be an old skill to you. Find your slope from the table doing change in Y divided by change in X. You know what? This X sure looks like a Y, sorry. Change in Y divided by change in X. Find your slope. Doesn't matter which points I use, because look, I got the same slope in both. And then just use the usual business we've been doing here. Sub in the slope into the equation. Sub in one of the points that you choose and for X and Y and solve for B. We could have done that in the previous question too, but it was so easy to find the B that we didn't have to. All right, let's look at our final example for today. Okay, guess where we are? We're with our two special cases again. These two that always cause trouble. Now, how do I know they're special cases right off the bat? Notice how this has all the y coordinates the same, and this has all the x coordinates the same. Right there, if you recognize that, that you can write the final answer, find your equation just like that and be done. But let's walk through what if I didn't realize those were there and I just start doing my usual business. All right, so. You know, I start finding my change in y, start finding my change in x to find slope. Obviously, this side's going up by 5 each time, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. This side is not changing at all, 0, 0, 0, 0. So when I go to find the slope, change in y over change in x, I get 0 divided by 5, which is 0. Now, at this point, when your slope is 0, that's got to be where the bell goes off if you didn't notice that the y coordinates were all the same. You have to know at this point that when you have a slope of 0, you have a horizontal line. And how are we gonna write the equation of a horizontal line? It's pretty simple. We're just gonna write y equals the y coordinate of any of the points. And all of these points have a y coordinate of 16. Now, if you had spotted that right off the bat, you could have just gone from here to here and be done with it, and there you go. All right, so the other guy, if this is our horizontal line, the other one must be our vertical line, but let's just go through the steps one final time and prove it. So, change in x change in y. All right, well, what are we doing here? On this side, nothing's changing. Minus 5, minus 5, minus 5. It's the same number. There's no change. On the other side, it looks like I'm going up 3 each time, so there is a change. All right, so if I were to write the slope out, not noticing anything was weird yet, change in y over change in x, and I sub it in, I'm going to get 3 divided by 0. Now, we've talked about this extensively in grade 9. You can't divide by 0. We've talked about all the different reasons, the different ways of looking at it. But remember, the idea is you can't divide by zero. You can't have three parts of nothing, of no part, right? No total, I mean. So we can't have that. It's a mathematical problem. So we call this an undefined number. We can write it there, but it doesn't have a definition in our number system. So an undefined number. Now, in this case, we have an undefined slope. So you have to know at this point, when you have an undefined slope, what does that mean? It means you have a vertical line. And how do we write the equation of a vertical line? We just write x equals the x coordinate. All the x coordinates are negative 5. So I just write x equals negative 5 and I'm done. Now, if you had noticed that before anything, you could have skipped all this work and just wrote your answer and been finished the end. All right, so those are the other two you got to watch out for, horizontal and vertical lines. Remember, horizontal lines always have slopes that are 0. Vertical lines always have undefined slopes. All right, so that's it for this final lesson here. Thanks a lot, and make sure you go back and watch any uh, lessons again that you need to really review up and learn your stuff.